So I was at a wedding reception the other day and there was this beautiful pond in the background and if you were a normal person you probably would have just stayed at the wedding reception but if you're a microbe hunter like me that is a little obsessed you might have stepped away like myself and gathered a sample to look at later. So that is exactly what I did and I am lucky that I did because we got some really cool stuff to look at. So today we are going to be examining two different organisms. One is these uh, snails here and then another is uh, some planarians that we found as well so as you can see these snails are pretty small we're gonna throw them under the microscope right here and this is at 40 times magnification and it is uh, the lowest magnification setting that I have with my compound microscope and we're looking at it with a dark field lens and the dark field filter is what makes the background dark and uh, you know, it kind of lights things a little bit from the side. Now, one of the other things that you might notice is that half of this thing is blurry and the other half is in focus. And it is really hard to get this entire thing in focus, mainly because of how big it is. And that's just kind of the way that, you know, microscopes work with larger organisms. Uh, you know, microscopes are built for things uh, that are a lot smaller, and so they have a smaller depth of field. Uh, but occasionally, you know, you get a really nice good view. Uh, but sometimes you just want to get a little bit closer and I wanted to see the eyes here, for example, and you can see like everything else is out of focus just because of how thick this thing is. But, uh, yeah, let me tell you a couple of awesome facts about snails themselves. So there are over 60,000 species of snail and all that I can confirm is that this is definitely one of them. So even though we don't know exactly which species this is, we can still infer a lot about this snail from where we found it. So for example, this is a freshwater snail, and freshwater snails are generally known for reproducing asexually, uh, which means that they carry both the sperm and the egg themselves, and uh, they basically just self-fertilize. And these guys can lay about 100 eggs at once, which makes it very easy for them to reproduce and take over the areas that they live in. For that reason, a lot of aquarists and other people find snails to be pests, uh, but for other people, it's they really like having snails because they can help clean up algae and control the algal growth that's going on. So uh, it really depends on what you're needing snails for, but I just need them because they look cute. Anyway, let's move on and talk about planarians. So these are flatworms, and they are very small, as you can see. We've got three of them here. And again, we're going to be throwing them under and doing a dark field look at them. So here is one of them, and as you can see, they are probably one of the cutest things that you can possibly look at under a microscope. Uh, just like the snails, they do have two adorable little eyes. And uh, I just gotta say, you know, with all of the things that I look at under the microscope, most of them don't have eyes, you know, or if they do, they just have a small little eye spot. Uh, so it's nice when you do see something that has two eyes because you can actually, like, I don't know, it feels like there's a little bit of a connection there. Like, I'm a little bit more closely related to this. So one of the really cool things to know about planarians is that they have a remarkable ability to regenerate what is lost from them. And so if you kind of think about, like, uh, lizards and stuff who they can regrow their tail after it's been chopped off or detached. Uh, planarians are like that, but on a whole other level. Um, they can be cut totally in half. Uh, they can lose, you know, a half or a third or um, even like one 127th of a planarian that is cut off uh, can grow into a full, complete uh organism on its own. So uh, scientists have been studying this forever, uh, you know, just trying to see how we can uh, use this knowledge to help with regrowth of human uh, organs and things like that. So it's a really exciting thing to think about. Now, another cool thing to know about these guys is that they have these beautiful little floppy ear-like things on its sides. So those aren't just for looking cute. Those are uh, actually chemical receptors. And so that basically allows them to, uh, quote-unquote, taste the, the water and what's around it. And so with uh, what's knowing in the water, they will go towards their food. Now, what do planarians eat, you might ask? 
Well, all planarians are carnivores, and some can be even cannibals. But if you're wanting to take care of these guys yourself, uh, you can easily do it just by feeding them some hard-boiled egg. And uh, I tried doing this about a year ago with some planaria that I had, but uh, I gave them way too much of the hard-boiled egg, and they died pretty quickly. So make sure that if you are feeding them and, and like trying to give them a culture, you know, you just give them a very, very little bit because uh, these are really small creatures and it goes a long way. And uh, if you have too much of the egg in the water, then it just kind of spoils the water, it makes it hard for them to live in. Now, with most of my videos, I like to bombard the audience with facts about animals all the way till the end of the video, but sometimes it's just kind of nice to enjoy the animals for what they are. You know, you don't really have to learn every single thing about them to enjoy uh, experience with them. So, that being said, I'm going to be signing off for the rest of the video, and I hope you enjoyed this Small Adventure Saturday. Uh, I want to thank my patrons uh, for being supportive, and uh, all of my subscribers. So if you want to see more, you know where to find me. See you guys later.